And let me show you the, the clip here, ladies and gentlemen. Marvel, that y'all know I love and adore, has decided to hire its first black female director. She will be doing Captain Marvel 2, Nia DaCosta, Larry. How do you feel about Marvel hiring Nia DaCosta to do Captain Marvel 2? For me, that signifies that we might be getting Monica Rambo becoming a superhero. I know my folk Buzz would love to hear that, but Larry, what do you think? Yeah, man, I'm excited for that. I hope she gets that big Marvel money so she can go get her hair done. But other man, than that, man, man, I'm excited for. Man, you know that was you you know that was racist, right? That was very very racist. How is that racist? Man, what's wrong with her head, Larry? I'm looking at her. I'm looking at her from the side. It looked like she didn't even do her hair there. What is she not, going? What is she going natural, Larry? Natural being natural does not mean that you let your hair just go all unkept and looking and, and looking some sort of way. You could you could be natural and still have your hair look neat and nice. I don't, I don't know e what's going on I, right there. I don't even think you can get an opinion of what her hair looked like based on the, this picture. I mean, well, I'm not at the sides of it there. I don't know what's going on there. So you but, try to say her edge up messed up is what you're saying, not necessarily the texture of the hair. No, no, I'm not talking about the texture of her hair. The texture of her hair doesn't really matter. I'm just saying she needs to get her hair done, get it edged up, trimmed up, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, styled up, something. I, I, the texture doesn't matter. Okay. You know, you work with what God gave you when it comes to texture. So go for it. Do you? Uh, what has she done before? I, I, I'm not familiar with any of her work. I don't know her work either, but I'm assuming that if she's jumping into a Marvel movie, she must have done some things that we're just not aware of that that has some Hollywood respect on it because I don't care what you are, female, woman, gay, straight. I don't care what it is that 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 you are. Mm -hmm. You're not jumping on a Marvel movie unless you have credentials. Okay, so, so Nia DaCosta, her, these are her movie credits, all right? She worked on Little Woods in 2018. Candyman. Yep, Candyman that's coming in 2021. And that's pretty much it. Um, huh. she, ha she has been additional crew member and production for Meet the Family, Berman, Hoarding, Matchmaker, and The Proposal. And she's only got six directing credits. And these two of the these haven't been put out yet. Top Boys. That's what she's famous for. Top Boys, the TV series. In the um, UK show? Yep. She's famous for that. And Night and Day. She gets credit for that as well. But she's also produced, what's this? Odessa. So that's what you got with Nia DaCosta. And man, I'm excited, man. Because Yikes. I I'm excited because that, I mean, Top Boys was a good show. I mean, it's a good show. And they said she's in production doing the one that's going to be coming out. They're doing another season. One came out last year. She did that one with LeBron James. And she's about to do another season of it. So, hey, if Marvel hire you, you got the chops. I mean, it ain't like Marvel don't do their homework. So I'm happy for her. I'm excited to see what kind of a spin for ethics that she's going to put on it. I think the biggest thing that we'll get is Monica Rambo and Captain Marvel 2. Can't wait for it. See, here, here's this is this is this is my dilemma with this, right? Oh boy. Here's this: is that sometimes what Hollywood likes to do is they like to find people that are sort of unknown talents mm -hmm. and then foster that talent and they do great things when they're given the opportunity, when they're given good crews, big money, you know, good stories, all that. But sometimes what they also like to do is when they get tired of feeling the pressure of people saying, put in female directors, put in black directors, put in female black directors, when they get tired of feeling that push, they put in somebody who's not ready for that job yet. Somebody who's, who's, who's directed some TV shows, directed a smaller film, but it hasn't directed a hundred million dollar blockbuster franchise. You put them in that boat and then you just watch them fail and then you turn around and say, well, you see, we gave them a shot. They're just not ready. We tried, but they're not ready. And then they go back to the to their typical directors. And so I'm worried if I don't know, because I mean, 
I just, I mean, I just haven't heard of her work, and and maybe she can, maybe she can pull it off. I hope to God she can, but I don't know, man. I mean, I, I mean, obviously, if she, if she makes this, she does this, and it's a huge success, it's gonna catapult her to the next level, and she'll continue to get big, you know, big budget movies under her. I would be afraid though if I was if I was that studio executive that greenlit this film, I'd be afraid to put her on at, at the helm. I, I'll be honest with you. I might say I need I need somebody else that has a little bit more uh experience. I'm not saying it can't be another black female, but I think I might some I want someone with some more black, you know, some more uh experience. And I don't know. I mean, I'm maybe you can't go get an Ava DuVernay or something, but I bet you they probably could have got uh what's her name? Um uh chick from Watchmen. Um, you know, what is it, Regina King? Mm -hmm. They could have got her. She's been directing stuff. Uh, She's well, been that, I'm like this, man. Give the chick a try. I mean, I, give, I, 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 give her a I try. I tell you, but you know, Captain Marvel 2 is probably gonna have a hundred and fifty million dollar budget. That's a big try. Hey man, I mean, look, That's everybody a big try. Everybody needs opportunity. Everybody needs opportunity. And I think that of all the Marvel movies, as bad as I hate to say it, th the last Captain Marvel was one of the most hated. So I'm sure Marvel is saying anything she puts out is going to be better than part one. And I, honestly, wonder, I hope she does great. And I yeah. agree with you. The last Captain Marvel, it was it was pretty universally hated. And it wasn't that it was a bad movie. It was the fact that the other Marvel movies have been so so good that yeah. this movie that this movie came in as just okay it was okay. just okay it was, in, just in okay. Comparison, it it was, was mediocre in comparison and i don't yeah. want to say that it was the i don't want to say that it was the acting or it was the directing or it was the story i'm going to say it was probably equal parts all of that yeah it, and, and, and it wasn't and, up to par and i like um I'm a fan of Brie Larson. Y'all know I love Samuel L. Jackson, the cuss master. But it was, it's like you said, it was a combination of the story, the script. You had Monica Rambeau in the movie. And, and you then could Jack Witter. Not, not much. You let her fly the spaceship. That was her big call to fame. She had a beautiful little daughter who could have stole the show. And really, the show stealer was that damn cat that was an alien. That's who really stole the show. And whenever yeah. you have a powerful superhero who has the power of one of the Infinity Stones, we should not be saying that the alien cat is the showstopper. Right. Shouldn't say it. So you know what have you know what would have made this movie great? What if it was a DC movie? Man, because our expectations oh, would have been entirely different. Man, yeah. Man. <laughs> Moving right along, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes.